Welcome back to another show of our NBA Weekly Recap, where we go over the past week's storylines, you know, highlights, plays, whatever it is, you know, you already know who it is, it's your boy Q Walker, and... Today I'm going by KJ, but not Keezy today. Hey, we, 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 why are we switching it up? What's up with the KJ? I don't know, man, I just, I just, don't, feel, I just don't feel it today, you know? Just now now feel, we yeah. switching it up, boy, yeah. I swear yeah. for a love, boy. Uh-huh. Lakers go up 2-1 and everybody won't switch <laughs> up the game plan, but we gonna get into all of that real quick, but, uh, man... So let's let's go ahead and give our series recap. Hold on, before we get into anything, okay, we gotta say happy heavenly birthday. There you go. There you to go. My man Kobe Bean Bryant. There you go. As y'all can see, the highlights playing down below. Happy birthday, Kobe Bean Bryant. Rest in heaven. Uh, one of the goats of the game. Um, he was, he is truly missed even still to this day. His unexpected, you know, untimely death. Man, it, it still sometimes don't even seem real. Man, but the the world of basketball definitely misses Kobe Bryant. So happy birthday, Kobe Bean Bryant! But moving right into the NBA playoff series, man. Let's recap because I feel like um, this week it's going to be over for a lot of teams. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of Eastern well, Conference teams. Yeah, uh, today it might be over. Might be them. over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. today today's going to be over. So let's get right on into the um, weekly recap with the playoff series. Let's start with the Orlando Magic and Milwaukee Bucks. But hold on, before before we do that, let's let's give a recap of everybody real quick of what the series is for everybody so they can see what's going on. Of course, you got out east, you got, as of right now, this Sunday, you have uh, the Milwaukee Bucks up 2-1 over Orlando. Um, the Miami Heat is up 3-0 over the Indiana Pacers. The Celtics up 3-0 over the 76ers. The Toronto Raptors up 3-0 against the Nets. <laughs> and then out west, you have the Lakers up 2-1 against the Blazers. The Rockets up 2-1 against the Thunder. The Jazz up 2-1 against the Nuggets. And then you have the Clippers up 2-1 against the Dallas Mavericks. So, KZ Keys. Yes. Let's start off with the Orlando Magic and the Milwaukee Bucks. What, what you've seen in this series so far? I mean, this the game one surprised me. You oh, know, I Orlando, think game Orlando. one surprised Milwaukee. <laughs> or, <laughs> game one surprised everybody. Orlando came out and got the victory. So, mm-hmm. The big man for Orlando, Vucevic. Yeah, Vucevic. He been balling the whole series. Three straight, tw- no, two straight. Yeah, three straight twenty points game. Yeah. He been balling the whole series. He's the, he's the big difference. But um, Milwaukee is getting back into the flow. The defense is starting to come around. So I think I think, I think was he just went to up for fifteen yesterday. Well, yeah, I think he went to. You know what he's averaging right now? What's that? Thirty and sixteen. Thirty and sixteen. Thirty and sixteen right now. <laughs> Yeah, what are, you, what are you supposed to do with that? Um, we we both had this uh, had the Orlando, I mean the Milwaukee Bucks sweeping, but like Keezy said, everybody was surprised. Orlando came out that first game, punched them in the mouth. I think the Milwaukee came out there thinking, "Oh man, we got this in the bag." Yeah, Orlando's not gonna play hard. It'd be a sweep. We just go ahead and knock it out and get it on out of here. You, you had know? DJ Augustine out there. He, I mean, he looked like Gary Payton out there. It was it was, it was crazy, but I mean. It's, it's still gonna go four one. Yeah, four one. It's, it's it's probably over now. Four know? one. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely over now. It's yeah. definitely over now. So let's go on down to the next series. We have the Indiana Pacers and the Miami Heat. Keezy, my, my sleepers, the Miami Heat. I thought the Pacers would do a lot more than this though. Three nothing. Three <sighs> nothing. What what did we predict? We we predicted Miami in five. Yeah. So. I mean, we game we, one game, but I mean, God, dog, he, we right on schedule. But this is this is one thing I noticed though. Did you see where the Mil, uh, Miami Heat shot fifty two free throws? Yes, because they're they're in attack mode at all times. They're always in attack mode, attack mode, attack mode. You cool with that? Yeah, fifty two free throws. Hey man. That's a lot of free throws, bro. 52 I mean, free throws. You know what I mean? Free throws. That's a lot of damn free throws. Listen, they play hard. They, they gritty do. down low. They they are. And then they got they they got my two white hypes out there. Two white hypes. them daggers fly. <laughs> Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero. <laughs> two white Tell hypes. Me, man. Miami. That's my that's, that's my sleeper team. So man. so we next round we get Miami and Milwaukee. That's gonna be a. That's gonna Ooh, be. A bunch I can't of wait to talk yeah. about this. Series. That's gonna I, be a good one. Yeah, I can't wait to talk about. It. So then let's keep on going down, which we have the game of today. Uh, actually starts at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. You have the Boston Celtics and Philadelphia 76ers. Celtics close it out today. This one's over. It's over. It's over, yeah. Embiid is actually averaging 30 and 13 this series. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, he's doing he needs to average 40 and 20 then for them to try to win yeah, the game. So. To, they, they had their best chance yesterday. Their, their best chance to win one game was yesterday. And they blew it. They blew it. I don't know if it was more so they blew it or Kimball just took it because the last two minutes Kimball came alive. 
And then Richardson got that uh, clear pass foul at the end, too. It, yeah, that, that killed it. That yeah. killed it, yeah. So they got two free throws, and they got the ball back. I think they went up six or something they, like that with 49 seconds or something. So was, I mean, the, the, first, the first two games, it was the Jason Tatum show. And then yesterday, it seemed like, you know, Philly might – I mean, not yesterday, the day before yesterday. It seemed like Philly might pull it out. They seemed like they slowed the game down. But I don't know if you noticed, at the end of that game, and B, he looks spent. Yeah, he, he, he looks tired a lot. He's got that big body he needs to. Yeah, but he, I mean, he's going to be all right, though, because be, they about to make some trades. Yeah, yeah somebody's got to go. <laughs> they about to make some trades. So, MB, help is on the way, baby. Don't worry about it. Somebody's coming to Philadelphia to help you out. Ben Simmons is going to Cleveland or Chicago or somewhere cold. So He, he ain't. You know somebody try to say Ben to the, to the Gold State Warriors would be a good look? Houseway. I know. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. No. I have to sit here and scratch my head and think about it, but... No. 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 Nah, nah. no. Hell no. But anyways, we got um the 2-7 matchup, Toronto and Brooklyn Nets. They also play today. I mean, hell, this thing's a wrap. This, too, this right? is over, too. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's up 3-1. Nobody... I mean, what, 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 what do we have? We had we had, we had had 4-1 for every series in the East except for Milwaukee. We thought they were sweet, but... So we're pretty much opposite of everything. Little did we, we know. Had. Yeah. <laughs> Little did we know everybody was going to come out and just lay an egg. But, yeah, I mean, it ends today. Toronto. What did you say? Everybody's getting rest in the East. Everybody's getting rest in the East. Everybody's yeah. going to get a, week, a week's worth of rest in the East. But, They'll yeah. be playing golf, fishing. They got a lot of stuff to do down there a lot in Orlando. Of stuff to do. Yeah. yeah, if you don't believe me, ask the Phoenix Suns. But, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, man, yeah, it's a wrap. Toronto wins this thing going away today for nothing. They want to go ahead and get them out the way, rest up. Uh Congratulations, Nick Nurse, who was named Coach of the Year, Coach of the Year. yesterday. So, yeah, it's, it's the East is pretty much done for. And then we go over to the fun comedy. <laughs> well, we got the Dallas Star. Let's start down low. We got the Dallas Mavericks and the L.A. Clippers. So, okay. I want to talk about this series. Okay, go ahead. Floor is yours, man. You got it. The Clippers are a bad call and an ankle away from being down 3-0. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Porzingis got ejected in game one. Right. He had been killing. Right. And the Clippers end up winning the game by eight. Yeah. Because Luca pretty much had to try to do more than what he could in the second half. Mm-hmm. The Dallas Mavericks bench is killing the Clippers bench. Seth Curry out there looking like his brother. Yeah. Showing Tim up. Hardaway Jr. is out there getting buckets. Like his daddy. They got your boy who you call Baby Iverson, uh, Trey Burke. Burke. He's out there giving them work. He drives right every single time and shoots a layup, and they ain't trying to stop him from going right yet. But that's crazy. I know what you're going to do every single time. Every time, time and I can't, I can't, I can't stop, stop you. I can't stop you, though. Oh, man. I think I think they, uh, not to cut you off, I think they're second in the playoffs as far as bench production. I think they average the most points from the bench. I think it's 39 points a game from their bench. Mm. And I, I wouldn't doubt it. But what you think about that Porzingis injection, though? Oh, it was terrible. Let's just go and play this clip right quick of the Porzingis injection. As you can tell right here, a little pushing and shoving, not too much of nothing. A little, little, little talking back and forth. Porzingis is doing what he's supposed to do, though. Nah, Porzingis should have got out of the way because Luca and uh, Morris, where well, they were just chit chatting about, you know, about the call, and here come. Porzingis in there running his mouth, you know. It's always that one friend that <laughs> run up in there to get popped in the mouth, and there, and that's what happened to Porzingis. He got popped with that technical, and now he's out of here. Then he's out of here. Because see, they meet a half court, chit chat a little bit. I'm sorry, you know, I didn't mean nothing by it, and there he, there, there, there he, he is. All in the way. Yeah. Was he diddy? Like they ain't gonna notice his big seven foot four ass in the middle of everything. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh man, but um, the Porzingis ejection, like you said, I think I'm not gonna say it. it if the if he was playing the Mavericks would have won, but he definitely would have been a factor yes. in the in the first game. Um all signs indicate if he would have played, they probably would have pulled that game out. Mm-hmm. But um I don't think he should have been ejected. Um I'm gonna talk about the refs a little bit later, but I think he should have still been able to play in the game. But what you think about this series? How how's this thing on? So go? the Clippers win that game 118, 110. Okay. Then the Mavs come back and win game two. Okay. Porzingis and Luka both were able to finish the game. They went by 13. Yeah. The Clippers won game three, 130 to 122. Okay. But Luka hurt his ankle. He mm-hmm. didn't play the whole fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. And I think he missed the last two or three minutes, something like that, of the, of the third or whatever. 
So we're gonna play this clip of, of Luca spraining his ankle. You can see the play. He comes in, boom, right there. Somebody shot him. Yeah, and it's it's at that point the game's pretty much the game's pretty much over after that because he couldn't move. He you know he took himself he took a foul actually to take himself out of the game because he couldn't move. I mean, let me look at this real quick of when it occurred. Um, they actually did a, a MRI. They said no no ligament damage or anything. Um, I, I'm assuming he's gonna try to suit up and play. I don't see why he wouldn't. Uh, they didn't say it was a grade two or anything higher sprain or anything like that. But as you can tell, man, he's in a lot of pain. Man, that's, that's a lot of production coming off the court. Paul George hasn't played well. Who's that? At all. Who's that? The whole series. Dude, Paul George is playing? Yeah, yeah, barely. He's out there. He's not playing, but he's out there, though. Paul George. Well, hold on, Keezy. Before we talk about your guy, mm -hmm. before, you know, we did the we did the first show, who did I say you can't trust? <laughs> <laughs> Who did I say you can't you trust? You said you can't trust him, and I'm I'm starting to be right there with you. You said you couldn't trust Kawhi either, but... Well, the game Kawhi scored 35 points, he still shot horribly. So, go go look it up, man. Look it up. He still shot horribly that game, but, 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 he still did what he had to do, mm -hmm. regardless. You know what I'm saying? He tried to put the team on his back. Unfortunately, he couldn't get no help from Paul George. And then, you know, what's crazy is that Paul George, when they did the, the post game, he came out with the ice on his shoulder. Did you see yeah, that? Sometimes you got to put a little ice on there. But he, you know, he, he was reaching for the ball and took a took a little spill on it, you know. Um, They've been in the bubble for three weeks now, right? Yeah. Has he complained about his shoulder? In his nah, but look, man, he was going for that loose ball, right. and he had his arm extended, right. and he failed. Right. And he kind of put, had to put a little ice on it. After right. that. But he's cool, though. You know what I'm saying? Right. No, nah, I ain't buying that. He nah. had the ice on his right shoulder. Nope. You didn't. You didn't see it hurt. But he shot the ball about twenty four times the other night. Did you? Nope. Okay then. So he's good to go. No excuses. No excuses. Mm -mm. No excuses. They better play some defense. My God, man! I they just they just lining up one on one and just driving right by everybody on I, the I thought, I thought it's Kawhi bad. and PG was supposed to be the best wing de uh, defenders in the league. What happened with that? Well, whoever they, they put get that beat out. by Luca's you know YMCA moves to get to the bucket. Yo. But everybody's beating them, though. Seth Curry's beating them off the dribble. Oh, man. What happened to, you know, all oh, this team defensively is going to shut people down and do this, that, and the third. Meanwhile, Lucas' first game got 42. Lucas killed him. So, I mean, yeah, but this series, um, what, what do we have? We both had it going, what, 4-2? Yeah. I'm going uh, to stick with my Clippers in six, you know. I'm going to stick with the Clippers in six yeah, as so. well, especially with Porzingis' ankle injury. I mean, it might even go, you know, four one now with, with, you know, with his, uh, pussy. I mean, not pussy, it's Luca, Luca's injury. So, play close attention to that. But anyways, we go up to the surprise series of the whole playoffs, which is the Utah Jazz and the Denver Nuggets. I'm, I'm so surprised. I had the Utah Jazz sweeping for nothing, but you know, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was wrong in my prediction. Nah, I'm just playing, man. This this series right here has surprised everybody. We both picked Denver on this. You picked Denver in five. I picked Denver in six. And then we both look like idiots, right? Yes. We both, I not, still have a chance. Not to say Denver can't come back. Not to say, but the way they've been playing right now is is, is defensively horrible. they are just they're bad. Are they playing defense? Oh, they they just bad defensively. You know what the funny part is is that although they're down two one, they actually lead the playoffs in three point percentage as a, as a team. But you couldn't tell that. Well, they need to get some twos then and hit some free throws. You, you, can, you can tell. But anyways, the Jazz right now, they're averaging the most in the bubble, 124 points per game. Uh, Donovan Mitchell is leading all scores in the bubble right now. I think he's at 39 points per game. And then um, they're actually, I looked at some more stats for the Utah Jazz. They're leading in, in team field goal percentage at 50%. Second chance points at 16, chance, 16 points per game at second chance points. Points in the paint. They're leading the NBA, 49 points per game. That's because Donovan Mitchell's getting in there. Well, not not even that. It's just you got Rudy Gobert in the last game was the turning to David Robinson. He had 2011 at halftime. I don't I don't understand how Gobert 20, shouldn't. If you let Gobert score more than 10 points, then you need to check about, I was just about to say, if Gobert scores more than 10 points, and those 10 points need to come from putbacks and free throws. If you, they, they man, they running plays with Goldberg. That was the <laughs> I, mean, was I, know the Joker is, I know the Joker lost weight, but he's he's still real slow. Bro. There, they there, are, no, no. There, there is no way Rudy Gobert should have 20 and 11 at halftime. At half time, nah. I don't care who you are. No disrespect. That's, that's why they got blown out, because if, if he has 20 points at halftime, it's a wrap. The game is over. Yeah, 
at, at that point. Yeah, and then I, even though Donovan Mitchell, he's been doing what he's gonna do. You know what's surprising is Mike Conley surprised me the way he came out. Yeah, he was. He was he was six for six at uh, three point line at one point in time. You see what they told him at the end of the game. Uh, his teammates was like, man, you should have some more babies. You know, like this. <laughs> but yeah, Mike Conley definitely surprised me. I was not expecting that. Um, Donovan Mitchell, I'm a little bit surprised only because of his his scoring outburst. Mm-hmm. He's good. Everybody knows he's a good player, but he's been real efficient. He shot the three ball really, really well this playoff series. And man, right now he's he's leading them. To, it looks like to the second round matchup against the Clippers. So I picked I picked Denver because I thought that Utah would have a problem guarding. Denver's pick and roll with, mm-hmm. with Joker and, and uh, Jamal Murray. Right. But it's the other it's way the around. Option. It's the other yeah. way around. They cannot stop Donovan Mitchell and Gobert out there running the pick and roll. It's just... I'm trying to figure out. They look out. like John Stockton and Carmelo out there. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like like you said, the pick and roll action with Donovan and, well, hell, Mike Conley. Mike and, Conley now, yeah. And it's like, okay, what is it, who's dropping back? Are we, are we fighting over screens? Are we going underneath screens? What the... To, to your point, it looks like they're confused out there and they don't know what to do, which is why Goldberg gets a lot of alley oops because they get caught in that switch and it's like, okay, now Joker's guarding the ball handler, which may be Mitchell or Conley, and somebody's dropping back, and that's an easy lob for Goldberg. So it's like, what are we doing here? What, what are we doing on The crazy thing is, it's like that for every, in every Western Conference series. Whoever, the pick and roll is killing everybody. Everybody. It's killing, it's killing the Clippers because they don't know what to do with Luka and Porzingis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Denver and Utah. The Lakers the Lakers are killing Portland on the pick and roll because AD is either rolling to the basket or he's shooting jump shots but whenever see, he's see you, ready. But see, who, who did you just name? Luka, KP, mm-hmm. right? Pretty good. Decent. Yeah. Uh, LeBron and AD, mm-hmm. maybe top five. Mm-hmm. They getting pick and roll by Mike Conley and Rudy Gobert. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Like, you expect that from LeBron, AD, Luka, and KP. You don't expect no... Come on, bro. I, mean, I, I guess the pick and rolls is different in 2020, I guess. No, nah, you know? nah, pick, pick and rolls is different against the Denver Nuggets. That's all man. it is. I was, I was expecting Michael Porter Jr. to step up, yeah. uh, Joker to step up, Jamal Murray, which he had a great first game. But I, was, I, I thought it was primarily going to be... Denver had too much firepower for Utah. For, for Utah. And that's that was that's just exactly what that's exactly what we thought. Yeah. Lo and behold, it's the opposite of the way around. And Utah is so consistent in what everything they're doing is is crazy. I mean, the the other game the other day, the fourth quarter, Denver just looked defeated. Mm-hmm. They looked like they didn't even want to play no more at, at that point, man. But Utah could easily be up three zero. Easy, easily be up three zero. Yeah. Oh man. But anyways, continuing on up. You got OKC and the Houston Rockets. Um, OKC finally got one yesterday in the overtime, in overtime. win uh, against the Rockets. So you think that makes them get Russell Westbrook back? Nah. I no. still think they wait, let them wrestle at least one more game to see what happens. Okay. But hold on, before we go, before we talk about this series, you, you switching your prediction on the Denver and uh, Utah Jazz? You gonna keep it the same, or you I gonna? I mean, I'm a man of my word, so I'm gonna stick with it. But stick with if it? I could change it, I'd change it to Utah in six. But you know, it's, we, 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 I don't know, bro. It looks like that might be the one playoff series we definitely get wrong. But anyways, back to the Rockets and the Thunder. Um, James Harden, he didn't look particularly well. Um, actually, the, the last two games, really, uh, the, the game that they won was a game two. He shot really, really horrible. His teammates actually carried him in game two. Um, James Harden did play a little bit better yesterday. But this is what I'm confused on. Um, OKC looks like they're confused on what they want to do. They don't know if they want to keep Nerlens Noel out there and do the small ball lineup or Steven Adams and go big. Um, yesterday, Jeff Green was eating the back out of Nerlens Noel. He's, he's the unsung hero on the Houston team. I was, Jeff Green is. I was just, man, where did this guy come from? At one point, he was like, you know, five from six from three-point line. Nerlens Noel couldn't do anything with him. But that's what I see out of OKC is they don't know what to do with Nerlens Noel. Nerlens Noel, he can't give you anything offensively. But at the same time, when they go small, they really don't need anything from him. But if you're out there for defensive purposes to guard Jeff Green, can you guard <laughs> Jeff Green? No. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro, if we go small and we need some agile people out there, can you do what we ask you to do? No. But anyways, um, OKC... Uh, Jeff, the addition of Jeff Green putting him at center, man, was a genius move by uh, Dan Tony. Gives him some more flexibility on the perimeter because you know PJ Tucker, he's just going to one spot. 
Yeah, he, he's not moving from that spot. He's either. going to the corner, and, and that's it, bro. He might set one screen and <laughs> stand in that corner the rest of the time. That's it. So, now, uh, shout out to OKC. Chris Paul, he turned back the hands of time. Although, I will say this, Keith, I'm going to get your thoughts on this. I think Chris Paul is it's, it's a wrap, man. Well, yeah. That's and why it, he's... Yeah. Yeah. The, the shots he was taking yesterday, he looked like he was working too damn hard to get those shots, bro. He is. It's one thing to be, you know, six, 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 eight to get shots, but when you six, what, two, three? Yeah. On a good day. On a good day, uh, he was working a little bit too hard. But what have you seen from this series, though? I mean, what I expected. I mean, we, but we, we said this series was gonna go seven games. We did. We did. I don't see it going that far. We don't. We no. Don't. <laughs> it's the wrap. Actually, yeah. actually, I'll be honest. I'm not the biggest James Harden fan. But James Harden has willed his team to at least two wins. And we'll see what happens with Russell Westbrook. Um, he was supposed to be missing two games, but now it's indefinite. They're not really sure. So do you think James Harden can carry? Because against OKC, yes. Yeah, you think so? I think they can probably let Westbrook sit out this whole series and they probably still win. I, mean, I don't see I don't see a way OKC can beat them. You probably right. Yeah, you probably right. But that next series, depending on if all things continue to go according to plan, but anyway, speaking of the next series, um, mm -hmm. you got the Portland Trail Blazers and the, um, the Los Angeles Lakers. Keys, I saw this stat right here, man. I don't know if you've seen it, but I'm going to put it up here on the screen real quick. The Lakers all-time record versus the Blazers in the playoffs is 9-2. Doesn't really go both well for your guys, but anyway. <laughs> what have you seen from this series, man? <sighs> uh, up and down... The same Lakers we've seen the whole time they've been in the bubble, just no. up and down, no. still looking confused. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I mean, I don't think that the Blazers, the Blazers might win one more game. We said the Lakers in six. six we stick yeah. with that. I'm gonna stick. With, I'm gonna stick with Lakers in six. Um, the thing though, man, is is LeBron is in a lose lose situation, right? I'm gonna put it to you like this. LeBron wins this series. Oh, well, they're the number one seed. They're supposed to win it. He loses this series. Oh, how can y'all call that dude the GOAT and he lost to the number eight seed? He's in a lose-lose situation either way it goes, man. But He's not in a lose-lose. He's only in a lose situation if they lose. If they win, then they, hey, you're supposed to win. Move on to the next one and see what you're going to do. So he's never going to get, no, get no credit because then it's like, okay, that's what you're supposed to do. What you need credit for winning the first round series? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of credit you need for winning in round one? Because so team? many people, including yourself, had the Portland Trail Blazers. I did not the have the Portland Trail Blazers. That's, that's, that's the why. But, we um, both said Lakers in six. Yep, we sure did. Yeah. You sure? I gave, you know, after game one, man, my phone lit up like Christmas. I bet it did. And I'm like, man, I, I slept good that night. I kept telling, I bet you did. I kept telling people I had the Blazers winning two games, so then winning game one it wasn't a surprise to me. It's not like I said, you know, Lakers in a sweep, and everybody was like, nah, you got it wrong. But nah, man, um, I expected the Blazers to win two games, so they won the first game, which in a neutral court, it's not, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, because you're not taking home court advantage, you know, away right. from the team, so it doesn't mean anything. So them getting that first win, and what I did say is that. If the Lakers lost game two on a neutral court, they was in trouble. Oh, if they if they would have came out been down 0 2? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it'd have been trouble because now if the if all things considered, you would have been going back to Portland down 0 2, but you're on a neutral court going down 0 2, and you have, first of all, no fans to even get you hyped. Mm -hmm. So it's so it's like you can't even amp yourself up to even try to go up, you know. So nah, but I'm, I'm glad my Lakers came out. Tied this uh, went up one one or tied it up one one. Now we up 2-1. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, you, you see that man yesterday? Which one? Le Le LeBron Raymond James Jr. LeBron James. <laughs> what you mean, man? But, mean. but nah, man. Um, if Like you said earlier, if AD didn't come out and wasn't aggressive in the third quarter like he was, the Lakers more than likely probably would have lost yesterday, man. I just don't understand why they can't get LeBron and AD going at the same time. Explain to me what you mean by the same time. It's either it's either one or the other. Okay. So in the first quarter, it was all LeBron. Well, I'll say first half. But yeah. First half, yeah. all LeBron. Yeah. AD's out there looking like you know he's like he didn't even on play. the JV team and he don't even know what he's supposed to be doing. He <laughs> yeah. don't know the plays. He, don't know the play. <laughs> he just got up to varsity. And then the third quarter, they come out. Everybody's still playing. AD still not aggressive. He wasn't. LeBron goes to the bench, and then the end of that third quarter. AD just takes over. Yeah. 
And after after he took over, it was pretty much a wrap after that. Yeah, because we, we were texting during the game, and we was wondering, like, they're giving him that, that step-back jumper. He could kill. He could get 30 off of that. Off of him every single time. Off of that. They're giving that to him. So he started doing that. He got a couple of dunks, and he started being more I think the dunks is what got him. Got him going. Got him, got him going. Um, but, yeah, he became real aggressive. And like you said, the great thing about that third quarter is, for one, they scored 40 points in the third quarter. Two, Melo came out there. Well, he scored He scored 11 straight. Boy, he went to work. He was going right at LeBron, <laughs> he too. He went to like, work. He, he, went, he, he went to work on LeBron like he had the mismatch. Yeah, he did. I, oh, barbecue chicken alert. <laughs> Give me the ball. I got him. <laughs> Give me the I ball. got a kid on me. Give me the ball. <laughs> Give me the ball. So now he scored 11. I think he ended up scoring 13 altogether in the, in the third. But uh, that third quarter, he came out on a mission, and I think it was a blessing in disguise for the Lakers mm-hmm. because it threw off the rhythm of Dame and CJ. Yeah. Because, yeah, Melo got it hot, but Melo is a low block, you know, get these two-pointers where Dame and CJ trying to get these threes mm-hmm. off. And it, it kind of messed up their rhythm a little bit. So, and then AD, you know, he, he, he took off. It allowed LeBron to get a lot of rest, much needed rest to have his legs in the fourth quarter to, you know, bring them all home down the stretch. Um, am I still concerned? Yes, I'm still concerned. A little bit. Yeah. I'm, I'm still concerned. But I looked it up, Keezy. And actually, the Lakers, they have the best defensive rating in the playoffs. You, you, the Lakers did. You wouldn't know it. You know why? <laughs> you wouldn't Because they, they playing against a two-man show, and they double-teaming the two-man show every time. <laughs> and Hassan Whiteside is doing nothing. Yeah. Melo, was, he had down. one good game. Yeah. Gary Trent Jr. hasn't done anything. He, he was He was so good the whole bubble, and now, now the playoffs started. X-Factor. He's He's gone. Mm-hmm. Who else is out there? Uh, let's see. CJ, Dame, Gary Trent. Uh, Winion Gabriel. Winion who's not Gabriel. a threat to score on me. Uh, <laughs> uh, when, anytime you're playing against somebody who's excited that he got a nosebleed from LeBron James, you know it. Did, did you see that? He was excited he got a nosebleed from he LeBron. Gonna sell, he going to sell the towel on you on um, uh, eBay. But you got uh, Nurkic out there. I mean, he really he's okay. Um, but, yeah, man, it, I'm still concerned, but like I was saying, you know, the Lakers have, they're the best uh, defensive rating team to actually lead them, uh, the playoffs in points per game allowed. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all, well, they're tied with the Celtics at 98 points per game, so that gives me a little bit, you know, more room to breathe a little bit for the Lakers, but at the same time, they struggle so much offensively. Uh, thank you, KCP, for finally showing up in the bubble the past two games. Appreciate that. Um, Rondo will hopefully be back so Alex Caruso can sit his little ass down some damn word. Nah, Car- Caruso, Caruso gonna get more burned than, uh, than Rondo will. O- only because they gotta get Rondo's legs back together. And then also, you won't have plays like this from my uh, guy, from Carl. <laughs> from Carl Kuzma. From Carl Kuzma, man. Look at this bull ish right here. What is this, Keezy? My dude did a 360. Uh, I don't know what that was. And, and the thing is, he could have easily kicked it back to somebody who was trailing. Or he could have gone up strong and tried to dunk on dude. <laughs> Look at like, this. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Look at this. Well, what is that? If I was Frank Vogel, I'd let him shoot them free throws, and I would took him straight out of the game, and we would have to have a little chit-chat. Come here, let me holler at you for a minute. Sit down for a second. Hey, man. That, that was, there were so many things that was wrong, wrong with that. Man. Even if he would have made it. It's still stupid. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you even attempt that? Like, what? Oh, I don't know, man. But like you said, Cal's Kuzma was 6'8". Yeah. Who was that, Gary Trent? Nah, that was Anthony Simons An- An- or An- somebody. Anthony Simmons. Anthony yeah. Simmons. So, you want to make a statement. I'm going on. I'm trying to punch it. Oh, yeah. Because if you're going to foul me, yet, I'm going to try to punch. I'm going to try to put your hand in the rim. But yeah, that old 360 soft leg, when I saw it yesterday, I was like, man, what the hell was this? What, what are we doing here? Like, 360 laid up in the Cal but that's why nobody believes in you. Exactly. That's why nobody believes in you. But um, before we wrap the show up, man, what's one thing or a couple of things that have stood out to you during the whole playoff? The Clippers not being able to guard anybody. Okay. That's the biggest thing. Mm. I'm still not. I'm still not that worried that they're gonna lose this series. No, nah, definitely not. Or if Utah wins, I'm still not worried about them beating Utah. Nope. Not at all. But they between now and the Western Conference Finals, which I don't see anybody beating before they get there, they got to figure out how to play some defense. They got to figure out how to play defense, and PG got to be consistent. Yes. PG has got to be consistent. Um, the thing that, that has stood out to me is something that ain't got really nothing to do with basketball. It's the damn referees. <laughs> 
I swear for Lord, man, I thought the playoffs were you let you know you let them play through contact, you let them play, but it seems like every two minutes they blowing the whistle. Somebody's either getting a foul or somebody's at the free throw line. Man, it voted well for my Lakers yesterday because we lived at the free throw line. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I would like to see a nice flowing game without a whistle every two minutes, bro. Well, they need to stop fouling. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, well, when you got a 6 8 freight train coming down at you, you know what I'm saying? When you got the goat bearing down on you, what else are you supposed to do? Michael Jordan retired years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michael Jordan 6 8? Not nah, the goat. No, nah, Michael, Michael 6 8. I don't know about the, your goat. The goat retired years ago. Michael, Michael. What, what, what goat is bigger, 6 8 goat or 6 6 goat? A 6'6 goat with six rings. Yeah, that he got from playing with Scottie Pippen. Nah, shit. <laughs> that he got with Scottie Pippen. Shout out to Scottie Pippen. Should we, go th- should we go through LeBron's teammate list and well, talk about who he We had? don't have enough time. We I know we him. don't because it's a long, <laughs> great list of people he's been playing with. Yeah, he well, go, go ahead and name him. I, and I can name Scottie Pippen. Yep. Scottie Pippen is the top, top 50 greatest player of all time. Name me the time. Not according to our Beyond the Game show. Well, we they don't count. They okay. them, them and Skip Bayless don't you count. You know what? We're not even gonna talk about it because mm-hmm. we don't have time. We don't. I'm not gonna do it. And it's Kobe Bryant's birthday, so I'm not doing it on yeah. his birthday. Just forget it. I'm not doing it because y'all try to do this shit. You do this every week. I don't know how we always get on this. Because LeBron just... stay fouling too, and they don't never call a foul on him. He slides his feet. Slide. <laughs> he slides his feet. <laughs> he slides. He fouled Melo last night on a jump shot. They didn't call it. I didn't see no foul. As many whistles as they blow for LeBron, they couldn't get Melo one jump shot. Nope. LeBron slapped them all on his arm and everything, knocked the ball out of his hand. And he can't get a call on that. Nope. LeBron James. Nope. The one thing I do hate, though, is after game two, people were like, AD carried LeBron. I'm like, how did the AD carry LeBron in game two? It was a blowout. Yes, yeah, blowout. LeBron sat on the bench a lot. LeBron so. played 19 minutes, had 10 points. Yeah, he had you know a couple turnovers. I think he had six turnovers, but he played 19 minutes. Was he, had, he had eight turnovers last night. That he got to tighten up on that. He, got, he definitely got tightened up on that. But, you know, the whole narrative that, you know, AD carried him, it's like, right, that was up by 30 and a third. What did you want LeBron to do? He plays, he gets hurt, then y'all blaming Frank Vogel. <laughs> He's a, LeBron's in a lose-lose situation, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But anyways. There's so many excuses for LeBron. I don't understand why there's so many excuses laid out for him. You like you mean like the Paul George and the ice pack on the on the shoulder? Like that I already of, told you what happened to Paul like, George. Like that kind of excuse. Oh, I couldn't hit he, nothing because my shoulder fell, was hurt. He fell going for a loose ball. But that was in like the fourth quarter though. He'd already been missing the whole game. So that didn't have anything to do with that. Oh man, I can't I can't tell him that, you know. That I was just off. What can I do? What about LeBron talking about all this so stuff much. that's going on in the bubble after they lost game one? He was setting he was setting everybody up for the old okie doke. He was. It's a lot going on in the bubble. He we was. just don't know how to handle everything, how to deal with it. You're right. The lights in the background <laughs> and the backdrop is still real bad. We don't right. understand how to shoot. You right. Him and AD complained about they can't shoot, but they, they ain't going to shoot around. You're right. Hey, no, I ain't, I ain't got to say about that. They don't, they don't. There's so many things going on in the bubble, right. and we just don't know how to do anything. <laughs> they they don't do anything. He set everybody up just in case they lost. Yep. He already got all his stuff pushed out for everybody so he can blame it on something else. Well, we're going to get on the right here today because I'm not fooling with that. All I know is LeBron James is just letting you know that in the bubble, it's not all just cracked up to me. <laughs> That's all. That's He's all. the only one complaining. He's not. He's just only one. You know what? We get ready to get on up out of here. I'm not going to do this with you today. But, you know, I mean, we can't all say that a press conference with an ice pack just because we shot two for no, my shoulder was hurt this well. He never said anything about his shoulder hurting. He exactly. never said a word. And then all of a sudden it's hurting because you had a big. He didn't say anything about it hurting, though. All he did was have an ice pack on it. That's the, that's the excuse. No, it's not. that's the excuse. <laughs> that's the built-in excuse. So we we ain't we ain't gotta tell you. We can just look at you, be like, oh okay, well, his oh, shoulder was hurt. Oh, I can show you better than I can tell you, right, it's, right, right. Exactly. So we ain't gotta. Oh, so hey, Paul George, what's going on with your shoulder? Oh, well, you know, man, get out of here with that excuse. Kawhi ain't trying to hear that. We ain't trying to hear that. Kawhi carried him the other night though, didn't he? Didn't he though? Oh man, didn't he though? it was good to watch. It was. It's all gonna stop in a couple of weeks. But anyways. Um, Who's going to stop it? Anyways, we got to get up out of here. <laughs> yeah, because that's a whole nother conversation, and we're going to talk about that when we get to the Western Conference Finals when it's Lakers versus Clippers. But um, The Lakers are going to make it. Man. They're going to beat Houston. Anyways, we about to get up out of here like we said three times now. We got this. Yeah, we got Houston. Yeah, yeah we got this. It's, it's like work. Houston, sweet. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> Let's sweep. We'll, we'll sweep Houston. You think they have a problem with Damian Lillard? Wait till they get James Harden out there. And, Who's that? And Westbrook driving to the bucket. Who's, Who's going to guard Westbrook? 
Alex Caruso. Caruso. <laughs> Alex Caruso. <laughs> the Westbrook stopper. Alex Jeff Caruso. Jeff Green's going to go right at LeBron the whole time. We won't. Anyways, we're not even to that series we yet. Houston hasn't to. even won the game yet. Right, so chicken alert. We're going to see what happens. Yeah, we will. Shout out to uh, Charles Barkley saying the Blazers was going to sweep, you know, the Lakers as well. Shout out to that prediction. And shout out to him guaranteed the Philadelphia said what no, it was the Denver Nuggets was gonna win against Utah Jazz in game two. Shout out to Charles Barkley. Everything Barclay. Charles Barkley predicts does not happen. The complete opposite. That's why he's that's why he's a bad gambler. Did you hear what he said about Paul George? No. He said Oh yeah. He said you can't call yourself playoff Paul when you ain't winning. Said, I don't I call myself championship, championship Chuck. Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Charles Barkley. But anyway, we give him a up out of here. Thank you for tuning in to our NBA Weekly Recap Show. We will be back next Sunday where Keys will be wrong yet again but also make sure you check out beyond the game on facebook and youtube uh, mondays at 6 p.m and also tuesdays at 6 p.m you also want to catch up on previous shows you can catch the podcast on apple Podcasts, spotify google play store soundcloud uh speaker box i don't know wherever they play podcasts you can find beyond the game on you there listen to us in your car in your car at work work while you get the workout uh, in work out in you at home at chilling home chilling. Uh, if you can cook you home cooking food if you can't cook order something out and wait for them to bring it to you listen to us like that too you, when, when you're sitting there in the bathroom yeah you because know, i know you've been there for a while you know what i'm saying pop us on in listen to us comment reply back to us and you can tell us how wrong keys is anyway but anyways if you're getting on a battery keys you want to say something before we get a battery man I may not be right, but I'm never wrong. I want to know if you're going to get up out of here. I want you to treat somebody. I want somebody to treat your mama. Yeah. <laughs>